Hey YouTube, this is Wade from Everyday Sustainable. Today we're talking about cryptocurrency and mining it. Is that even possible if it's a digital currency? What does that actually mean? And most importantly for our purposes, what are the true environmental costs of mining cryptocurrency? It seems like nearly every day cryptocurrency is in the news for one reason or another. Companies like Amazon and Tesla have recently announced they have plans to start accepting Bitcoin, and it's also easier than ever to invest in cryptocurrency through apps like Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, they all offer these services. So it's almost impossible for us to have never heard of cryptocurrency, but the reality is many of us don't really understand it. So allow me to give you the simple version. Cryptocurrency is a decentralized form of digital cash that removes the need for traditional intermediaries like banks and governments to make financial transactions. In simple terms, it's digital cash that allows for peer-to-peer -peer transactions without any need for banks. Bitcoin is the original and most popular cryptocurrency, so that's the one I'm going to focus on the most, though much of what I'll say in this video applies to most cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin and now over 6,000 other cryptocurrencies are powered by the open source code blockchain, which is a shared public ledger. This public ledger records every transaction permanently. A block is known as a transaction, and these are chained together by code. Again, cryptocurrencies do not need intermediaries like banks because built into the currency is this public ledger of every transaction. This ensures that the same money can't be spent twice. In the same way your bank makes sure you can't use the same money to buy groceries that you do to pay your other bills. In the case of mined cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, the miner's job is to confirm these transactions. Even though words like mining and even my thumbnail for this video conjure up images of pickaxes, that's not the right tool for mining cryptocurrency. Considering it's a digital form of cash, computers are the right tool for this job. And not just any old computers, specialty computers, and lots of them. Picture a room filled with servers. If you're a Mr. Robot fan like me, images from that show might be what comes to mind for you. The point here is that verifying every single transaction of Bitcoin takes a lot of computational energy. It requires solving an increasingly complex math problem. Over time, this problem gets more and more complicated, meaning that it requires more and more energy to solve. Discussing how much energy is required and the amount of work that goes into verifying these blockchain transactions begs the question of why the miners do this work. Well, they're rewarded handsomely to do so. In fact, they're given six and a quarter bitcoins for each block they solve. Six and a quarter doesn't sound like a lot, but as of today's recording, that comes out to about 360,000 US dollars. That's right, $360,000 for verifying one transaction of Bitcoin. You can see why people are incentivized to spend a lot of money on these specialty computers and running them 24 hours a day and keeping them at an operational temperature to verify these transactions. Like I said, they're rewarded handsomely to do so. Clearly these miners are in it for the money, and who could blame them? There's a lot of money to be had. To further increase profits, they want to decrease their bottom line. How do they do that? They go to places where energy is the cheapest. Most Bitcoin is mined in China because there's lots of cheap energy there. It would be one thing if all this energy mining Bitcoin use came from renewables, but it's an entirely other thing that most of it comes from dirty energy like coal. Now that we've discussed what cryptocurrency is and what mining it means and we're beginning to broach the subject of energy use, let's talk about just how much energy really is used in the process of mining Bitcoin. The numbers are really quite astounding, so I'll try to give them to you in a few different ways. The first way to understand how much energy is used is that recording just one Bitcoin transaction uses the same amount of energy as the average UK household uses in two months. That's right, one Bitcoin transaction uses the same amount of energy as the average UK household does in two whole months. You can see how that adds up quite quickly. In total, mining Bitcoin uses one and a half times the amount of energy that the entire country of Ireland uses. That's right, mining Bitcoin uses more power than single countries do in a given year. The final stat I'll share is that mining Bitcoin uses more energy than all the solar panels in the world combined generate. 
That stat is mind blowing, tragic, and serves as a perfect transition into talking about what this means for us. First, that stat helps shed some light on why global carbon emissions have only increased since the Paris Climate Accord. It's like we've added a whole energy hungry country to the globe that didn't exist before. Also, we've offset the gains we've made in green energy technology. We're consuming more energy mining Bitcoin than we're creating through our solar panels. Of course, cryptocurrency isn't the only reason why emissions continue to increase. There's many other factors, but it does certainly chip away at the myth of progress. Things don't just magically get better over time, and technology doesn't solve all of our issues. In fact, sometimes it creates more issues. Cryptocurrency is a perfect example of that. Technology created this new industry that is consuming so much energy. It should be noted, as David Wallace Wells points out in The Uninhabitable Earth, that all of this is completely unnecessary. Cryptocurrency grows out of the distrust of one another and nations. We could and have lived without it. Now, I don't want to be too negative on cryptocurrency because there are benefits to it and I'm sure there will be supporters of cryptocurrency watching this video. It's not all bad, but the reality is the amount of energy it uses is horrible and the way it's contributing to climate change is completely avoidable and we should take actions to change it. In fact, some parts of China have already begun to ban the mining of cryptocurrency and I would be in favor of more of that, at least until we're able to offset the massive amounts of carbon emissions it creates. Now you don't have to agree with me on that. This brings me to my last point and that's the importance of being an informed consumer. The reality is it's easy to be naive on this topic. I personally had no idea about any of this even just a couple months ago, and that's okay if you didn't either. Perhaps that's why you clicked on this video. I would encourage you to do some more research of your own, especially if you buy and sell cryptocurrencies. I put some links in the description down below, but you can find some of your own as well. There's a lot of information out there about the climate costs of mining cryptocurrency. At the very least, we should be aware of what we're investing in, and we should invest like climate change is real because it is, and it's already affecting us. May we educate others, may we invest like climate change is real, and may we be better citizens of the world today and every day. I'll see you in the next one.